a watercolour beach. That's what I'm going to show you how to paint in this video. Welcome back to my channel. If we haven't met before, my name is Michelle. On this channel you'll find all things watercolour, a little bit of mixed media too. Please do consider subscribing. If you click the bell icon, you can get notified every time I have a new video for you. I make one free video a week here on YouTube on a Thursday with extra content on Saturdays for my Patreon subscribers. So there's lots of challenges when it comes to painting a realistic watercolour beach. First of all, you've got this idea of a large expanse. Um, you've got to get texture in it, but there's nothing much going on. This is always really difficult, and it's something that's kind of um, specific to watercolour painting. So in things like acrylics and oils, you can use those little brush marks and get some texture there without really indicating anything concrete, any sort of large objects. But that's really hard to do in watercolour painting. You need some texture techniques. So I'm going to walk you through eight stages today and the first one we're going to start with is colour mixing. Now I have seen an awful lot of beaches in my time, um, not just real beaches, I wish I'd seen more real beaches to be honest, but I've seen an awful lot of painted beaches, I've taught hundreds of art classes, thousands of students, I've seen kind of brownish beaches, I've seen beaches that have got a bit of a greenish hue and most of all I have seen kind of day glow banana coloured beaches, those really bright luminous yellows. And it's not always your fault. If you have this trouble with beaches, if you don't know how to mix the colours, the colour mixing for beaches, if you're a beginner to colour mixing, the colours that you're naturally drawn to, that you think might work, often are not the right ones. So I'm going to give you lots of colour options and show you how to deal with some big problems that you may find. Um, to get those little bits of texture and pebbles, I'm going to do another tutorial later on about um, large you know, rocks and things like that. But on this tutorial, I'm just going to give you the idea of there being a beach with a few small pebbles in and that idea of getting that expanse of beach, that texture, that natural colour. I'm going to show you how to fade the beach out so it doesn't stop in a hard edge where the, uh, where the waves might be hitting it. And I'm going to show you how to get depth, how to get pebbles and most of all, how to get a realistic colour. So let's start with the colour mixing. So let's have a think about beach colours. Um, the first thing that you'll notice is I probably have too many paints. So you've got a choice of things like these bright yellows, they um, end up looking very unnatural and bright, and then you've got these kind of orangey yellows, they again can be too orange, and then you've got these browns which aren't always a good colour either. The colour that I would say is closest um, to a beach colour, and bearing in mind that you know there are many, many colours of beaches, the colour I would say is closest to beach colour would be yellow ochre. It can be a bit too yellow, but that's the colour we're at least going to start with, and then I'm going to show you ways of adjusting it. Now this is Jackman's Art Materials Yellow Ochre. All yellow ochres across the brands, they're earth colours, so rather than being in the yellows, they're more in the earth colours, but it has a strong yellow pigment in it as well, and they tend to be very granular, um, very earthy, very grainy, and slightly opaque, slightly dull compared to, shall we say, some of the brighter yellows, certainly not a strong transparent colour. Now, this is what makes them very good for beaches, because you want that kind of, that graininess to your beaches. It will, however, still be rather too bright for a standard beach. So let's have a look at this colour and then we'll see how we can adjust it so that it becomes much more useful. So we'll paint some on here. So you can see it's not far off being beach coloured just by itself. Depends of course where you are. I mean in England, you know, I wish we had colours like this on the beach. They don't tend to be as bright. But it's you can see it's a really good starting place. Now the next thing I'm going to do is put another colour into it and the colour that I'm going to put into it next is raw umber. So this is raw umber, this is the Talons Rembrandt raw umber, and it's rather a cool, weak, light brown. Now if you have got burnt umber, it's a much darker, richer brown. So this one is a really light, really cool brown, and the Talons Rembrandt one is a particularly cool version of it. Some of them can be a little bit yellow as well. So what I'm going to do, and I'll swatch this one for you on its own as well, is I'm going to combine that with my yellow ochre. So if we just swatch the raw umber on its own, there you can see that's also fairly beach-like. So if we mix the two together, we can get something really quite natural going on. Now, if I need to cool this colour further down, I can add, and you'll be surprised at this, I can add purple. And the reason for that is that yellow and purple are opposite colours, and so one will cool the other down. Now, if you're a beginner and your yellow is too bright, the temptation might be to put something like Payne's Grey in it. So let me explain to you why that's a very bad idea and why you could end up with green. So I've got Payne's Grey here. 
and all greys are majority blue pigment and particularly Payne's grey which is the one that you tend to get in a beginner set. Payne's grey is very very blue based. Now if we look at our yellow ochre of course it's very yellow based so what happens if you put something that's blue based with something that's yellow based you're going to get green so your temptation if you have a yellow that's too bright might be to add Payne's grey but there is a strong chance that you will end up with rather a murky looking green so let's try it out. Of course it depends on the brand but there's a strong chance that that's going to start to look greenish. So what can we do instead? We can go for purple. So let's swatch our yellow again and this time we're going to put some purple in. Now because purple has not only got blue but it's also got red which is the opposite colour of green it's going to stop our darks becoming greenish. So can you see the difference there? This one looks much more natural and it doesn't have that tendency to go into kind of a dull kiwi fruit type green. This is Talon's Rembrandt Permanent Blue Violet. I could also use something like this, which is SAA Cobalt Violet. I'd probably stay away from this one here. This is a Perylene Violet, which is very, very pinky reddish, and it might just warm up my sand too much. But those are our basic sand colors. You can see by adding a little bit more water, we can just cool that color down, and we've got a really, really natural looking combination here. Now, if you don't have raw umber, because it's not that common a color, you can try using your burnt umber and mixing in a bit of blue with it um, so that you get a cool brown to start with. You won't need much of it either, so don't bung loads in. You just need a little bit. So you should be able to mix yourself a cool brown. You can cool down almost any brown in your palette by adding blue. And the blue that you want to add would be something like cobalt or ultramarine, one of those red base blues. Now, as we layer our beach up, we're going to look for texture and tiny pebbles. So we're going to be going into some of those darker browns, possibly even some greys in little speckles and also some white. So as you follow this tutorial along, it's going to go in stages and we're going to layer each stage. Now, it may appear that I go between one stage and the next very, very quickly, but you have to understand that you're just seeing the final cut in the edit. I will tell you when I'm letting the paper dry. And if I say I'm letting the paper dry, I mean I'm letting the paper get completely dry. So do be aware of that as you follow along. There are also dozens more different colour combinations and dozens of texture techniques that I could use in this tutorial. It would be, a, you know, eight hours long if I did them all. So I'm just going to give you a really, really basic way of, of making a beautiful looking natural beach. And from there, you can add extra techniques in and adjust colours as you need to later on. So now we've got our colours sorted out, I'm going to show you first of all how to cope with that bit where the sea kind of overlaps the beach. So it's the area in your painting, you've got the sea, you've got the beach, but then you've got this area where the sea kind of overlaps the beach and you can see the beach through the sea. What to do about that? I'm going to show you a technique I use next. So this isn't a tutorial about sea and waves, so let me know if you'd like more details on how to do that. But I just want to address this idea of the shoreline here. So what to do as your water comes in and hits your beach and you get that area where you can see the beach through the water. Now I've drawn a little pencil line here just to sort of delineate where that might be, but I don't necessarily want you to um, have strong pencil underneath your work like that because it could get trapped underneath but that's just to um, indicate where I'll be painting. So what I do in this case is I want the beach just to fade out. I don't want there to be any area where I stop painting the beach in a hard edge. So what I'm going to do is put water along this area. We don't want it to be drippy, wet and puddly. We just want it to sit there like so. And now as I paint my beach, I'm going to go up to the edge of this water line so that the paint just naturally fades and we don't get that hard edge because even when you're going in with a lighter colour you can find that that, uh, that hard edge just shows through the next layer of the paint. Now if I had a very long shoreline I certainly might wet this area in stages as I went across the painting if I couldn't get across quickly in one go. Let's just take that up a little bit higher. you see that none of the paint is puddly and what this does is it just gives a nice soft edge and then later on I'll let that dry I'll bring my blue paint across the top. Now there is a danger with um, blue and uh, hitting yellow just like for that you'll get green. That doesn't matter as much in the water but if you don't want to get green a little trick is to drop a touch of pink in. It'll push it all more towards grey, brownish grey and stop it going green if you don't want green, if you don't see green in that area of the water. 
water. Now you can see that my paper here is buckling up like mad. Um, this is just a demonstration piece for YouTube. I would normally be working on stretched paper, particularly important when you're doing a, uh, a big landscape that's got a lot of water in it. So I will link to a video that I've put above that will tell you exactly how to stretch your paper. I'm a big advocate of uh, paper stretching. I don't listen to any of this stuff about don't bother stretching your paper. It's a faff, far more of a faff dealing with the results of not stretching your paper than taking 30 seconds to, um, to stretch your paper onto board. So now we've got that technique sorted out, let's put our first layer on our beach and we're going to go a little bit lighter than we want the beach to look eventually because we're going to start layering up and getting texture and this is going to be our palest layer. So let's get on and paint the first layer of our beach. This is going to be a pale layer because we're going to work up various things on top of that. So this is just the first stage and I'm going to be using these yellow ochre and raw umber colours. I'm going to drop them in here and there, here and there so that I get right from the start some texture in my painting. There's a tiny bug here, he's just walking off the paper. There we are, got rid of him. So I'm going to wet to start with. Now the brush that you apply this beach with, you know, you can use a round brush like this. If you've got a very large brush, I've got this huge size 20 brush that I sometimes use for big things, but equally you can apply with a large flat brush as well. It doesn't really matter at this stage, anything that you can uh, do just to get the paint on fairly quickly and evenly. So I've given that lots of nice water, but I'm not letting it dry in puddles. I've got some kitchen towel and I'm just drying my brush so that I can lift a little bit of the water out. And then I'm going to go straight in on dry paper and we're just going to mix like this. If I put the paint on and it looks too dark, then it doesn't matter. All I'll do is just add a little bit of water straight to the paper not letting that edge dry. This is why it's important to um, have a large brush on the go so that you don't get a load of drying lines. Though a little bit of texture doesn't matter, you know, let's take that up at a little bit of an angle. Imagine we have some water coming down here. You know, a little bit of uh, drying marks doesn't matter. They can be rather uncomfortable if you get a great big one in the middle of your paper. Now, as we go along, take the tiniest amount of raw umber and just drop that in and I'm just going to blend that with water because we really don't want it being too crazy. But I don't want too much of an even application. I want there to be areas, I want it to be overall light, this first layer, but I want there to be areas that are slightly different to other areas so that from the very beginning we're getting an idea of texture on the paper and that everything isn't just one shade. And at its simplest, this is the first way that you can make texture appear in your paper. These are granulating colours anyway because they're earth pigments is by just using different colours directly onto the paper and not over mixing them. Another thing you could do if you wanted to is just to get a damp brush, dry your brush and then just lift out in places so that you have some lightness here and there. You don't want to work on this too long though because you'll start to get very hard edged marks if you work on it for too long. It's starting to dry now. So we've just got this first very pale under layer with a little bit of variation. There's no puddles, so I'm not going to get great big back, back runs. And now I'm going to allow it to get completely dry. So for our next stage, we're going to splatter with masking fluid. I'm going to show you how important it is to apply it in a certain way so that you get a sense of distance to your beach texture. At this stage, if you're getting some value from this video, could I ask you quickly, please, just to click the like button. YouTube rewards channels with audience interaction. My channel's really starting to grow now. I'm so grateful to all of you. If you like, share, subscribe, or leave me a comment, YouTube will show this video to more people so I can help teach more people how to paint. So for the next stage, we're going to splatter. So I've got an old toothbrush here with the really scruffy bristles, and um, I've got some masking fluid. I'm gonna tip a little bit of it into here. Masking fluid bottles get upended like nothing on earth so it's always good to just decant a bit and get the lid straight back on them. I'm not at all messy and um, I normally just wear my ordinary clothes to paint in. I never get paint on me but the amount of times I've knocked these over and I know loads of other people knock them over as well and it's hard to get them out of your clothes so tip a little bit out and then we're going to splatter. So I'm going to dip in and if I run my thumb backwards like this the splatter will go forward. So I'm going to point at my paper and just splatter forwards. So this is going to make tiny, tiny little dots all over my paper. And eventually when we put a darker color on top, 
this lighter colour will be reserved. Now whilst we're splattering what we want to do is get an impression of larger pebbles at the front. So I'm trying to make it sort of almost like the first bit I splatter might be down here and then when there's only a tiny bit left on the brush I'll go further back here and I may even get the toothbrush like this and dot some on as well. You have to be careful doing this because it's possible to make very uneven um, jagged marks that don't always look quite right. So if you, if you sort of tap like this you tend to get slightly rounder marks. I'm not going to overdo it because this is just the first layer but this is just going to give us a little bit of texture on this first layer. I'm also just going to have a look and make sure that none of these larger marks at the front have ended up too sort of jagged so I'm just going to take them out slightly horizontal make them a little bit rounder so that later on when they rub off they're going to look more like pebbles and less like someone has just hit a piece of paper with a toothbrush. It's time now for our second layer of paint. We're going to go right the way across the beach again, a little bit darker this time. So the masking fluid's dry. It takes about five to 10 minutes for masking fluid to dry, so usually not too long. And all I'm gonna do is exactly what I did before, but I'm gonna go over with a layer of darker paint. So I think I'll grab my big brush this time. And I'm going to start with water again. And of course, what will happen is the masking fluid will reserve that first color. So we've already gone in with two colours and we're going to start getting really some more detail going on. So again, trying to keep this edge wet here. If it's very warm when you're doing this, really put a lot of water on. You can always sweep some out at the end so you don't get puddles, but you don't want to allow it to dry. So again, I'm going in, I've got the raw umber here and putting more colour on that. It's going rather bright yellow, isn't it? So I may do what I suggested earlier and I may go in with a little bit of purple in a second. And when I say a little bit of purple, I do mean a little bit of purple. I mean, I've suggested that people put purple on their yellow before now to kill the color off, and they've really sort of whacked in with a massive load of purple. Of course, it's a very strong color and it's just overwhelmed the yellow. So when I say a little bit of purple, I mean, you know, really a tiny amount because you can always add more. So I'm gonna take a little bit straight from my palette here and just in places, drop that in. Remember, you're looking for drama, so where you've got these light bits that you've reserved, let's get some darks in there. And of course, if you were doing a, a proper painting, you might have some areas that were, you know, definitely darker than others, perhaps by the water, or perhaps there was, you know, a sand dune or something like that. But I'm just going to put these in just randomly here, just these tiny touches of purple. See how it's gone very purple there? We're just going to spread that out so that we just get that darkness that we're looking for. We'll come along here. Just having a check that there's no puddles so that we don't get too much uneven drying. As I said, you can, you know, you can have some back runs going on, but you don't want too much of that. Just got a bit of uneven water levels at the top here, so I'm just going to re-wet that area, take it across. You're trying to get the water levels even across the whole picture. If there are any little puddles, you want them in here where you've got um, stones and things like that. In fact, you can do them on purpose in here. What you don't want is some great big sort of round mark that's going to look very strange later on, but tiny little um, little changes in water levels are going to be absolutely fine. So there's my second layer. Again, I need to let it dry. And now it's time to put another layer of masking fluid splatter on. So now that second layer is dry, we're going to go in again with masking fluid and splatter some more. Now we won't be putting a full layer of paint on top of this, but we will be splattering with paint next, which means that as the paint splatters across, it's going to hit some of these areas of masking fluid too. And we're just going to get some really interesting, more sort of nuanced shapes. Again, I'm going to go a little bit stronger in the foreground. Try not to be regular when you're applying this stuff. It's really um, a mistake I see quite a lot when people are looking for some kind of random texture. It's it's human nature to try and be neat with things and to apply things evenly but then you end up with kind of um, you know you paint a, a Dalmatian dog or something and it's got evenly spaced little markings so it's just something to be careful with and wherever possible just sort of randomize those marks without spreading them out too evenly because they wouldn't be spread evenly on an ordinary beach. And again I'm just taking the ruling pen in and just flattening off some of these shapes. It's really important when you're doing um, little pebbles on beaches that they're elongated um, widthways. 
In other words, they're wider than they are high wherever possible and that the bases are a bit flat. And there's two reasons for this. One is foreshortening, so you're looking across them so they'll become foreshortened so they'll appear wider than tall. And the other is that they'll be semi-buried into the sand. So if you make little dots that are perfectly circular, especially these large ones, it's not going to look realistic and they're not going to look like they're properly sitting on the beach. So I'm just going to give that now five minutes until the masking fluid is dry. So for this next stage we're going to splatter with paint this time. I'm going to splatter both with darker paint but also lighter paint because this is one of these very rare occasions when I'm going to encourage you to use a little bit of white paint but we're going to use it in a way that's going to be very very subtle. So for the next stage we're going to splatter with paint and there's a couple of colours that I'm going to use. I want a very natural dark brown so I'm going to use sepia. Now if you don't have sepia you could, I mean you could use Payne's Grey at this point because you won't be mixing it with the yellow so much as splattering it on top fairly darkly so it probably won't go green. You could use Payne's Grey. You can equally get some burnt umber and just mix a bit of ultramarine in it. This will give you a, uh, a less warm dark brown shall we say. I'm also going to be using white. So this is um, the Titanium White by Jackman's Art Materials. It's a really good white, covers really well. Remember, you can get a discount off Jackman's paints if you go into the video description. There's a code in there. You can get 10% off of all their paints and brushes. I'm going to be using this as well. Now, I don't often use white. There's a few occasions when I use white. I'm going to actually mix a tiny bit of paint in with it so that it's not too stark, but obviously adjust depending on the kind of beach you've got. So I'm going to get my, uh, my palette. Here I've got some earth colours. I'm just going to get a little bit of water on this toothbrush and just dip in. So this is my CPU. You can see it's quite a dull, dark colour. I don't want it too wet, so I've just got some tissue paper on the side and I'm just going to clean that out a little bit so there's not so much water in it. You can use tube paint as well with just a touch of water. And again, I'm going to splatter very lightly because I don't want any great big marks in it. You don't want the beach to go too dark. We just want to get that impression that there's things going on all over it. For this particular colour, I'm just going to stick to these little marks because I don't want, as I said, I don't want it to be too dark and we're going to put some more pebbles on at the end. Next I'm going to get some of the white. Now because I don't want the white to be too clean, I'm going to put it in here and I'm not going to completely clean the toothbrush because, as I said, I want to knock the white back a little bit. What I'm looking for is light colour that's opaque. The white will make it opaque and it will help it to cover the, uh, the colours that are already on the beach. So we'll get an impression of light pebbles. And this is really an effective way of using white paint. So I'm just going to mix a little bit. You can see it's not pure white, but it's going to be lighter than the surface it's going on. And again, we're going to splatter. So if you've been messing around with it and you find that your, you know, your paint has gone too dark, then this is a good way of lightening it up. I think I'd like it even lighter than that actually, so I'm going to clean my paint brush now. We're only putting a few layers on here, I mean you can go as far as you like with this. You can use a similar technique for things like forest floors. Um, I'll probably do a video on things like pathways and forest floors at some point. So I'm going to go in now with a little bit of colour but closer to the pure white. And here we start getting some more stuff going on. I'm also going to, towards the front, get some more pebbles here. For our final stage we're going to go in with a brush but first of all we're going to remove all of that masking fluid. So there's a couple of ways of removing masking fluid. You can of course rub it off with your fingers. You can actually find that in a large area like this you can actually blister your fingers. I've done that before. This is a good masking fluid. comes off really easily. You can also take an eraser across the top and take it off that way. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to get all of this masking fluid off and then I'm going to just tip all of this waste stuff over the bin. Can you see those light areas that we reserved right at the beginning starting to show now? So really happy with that. I just want it to look a little bit more pebbly and a little bit more realistic down the front here. So I'm just going to take the paint that I already had here and some of the darker colours that are in my kit here and I'm just going to take a paintbrush. I've got a smaller paintbrush so this one is a size 6. I very rarely go down to a tiny tiny paintbrush to be honest and I could go in first of all and just make some of those little marks that we were using before a little bit more rounded. So do remember just to have a look in the uh, video description before you go. 
I've got that discount off of Jackman's Paints that I told you about. There's also some free PDFs that you can grab down there. Some um, sort of downloadable guides that uh, won't cost you any money that you can download to your computer. There's details as well of my Facebook group that you can join and also my courses on Thinkific. So you'll see what I'm doing here is I'm just making these pebble shapes a little bit more realistic. So I'm going to dip my brush in again and we'll go in with some darker paint now. So a little bit of Payne's Grey here. You know, you can even go into a little bit of blue or lilac. You know, I'm talking about very, very subtle differences. And look at that, you know, it can really give some interest to your picture. Remember what I said about not being too even with these colours. And it's so important that you get this elongated shape to them. If there's anything like this um, light one here that doesn't look particularly realistic, you know, you can just kind of go in front of it slightly, make it look a bit better and just adjusting so that we get some stronger pebbles. And going with medium colours as well. Don't be afraid to go quite large in the foreground. I will do you a tutorial on, on larger rocks because several of you have asked for that and it's something that I really enjoy painting. So for this one we're just getting that impression of the smaller pebbles on the beach. And can, can you see how natural it's looking and how you've got all of this beautiful texture and nothing's looking uncomfortable and messy We've got none of that sort of bright yellow banana-y colour going on. It's all just looking really pretty and really, really textured and hopefully pretty realistic too. Now, whilst I hope that you found this beach tutorial useful, the things I've shown you today are by no means the whole story. There are lots of other colours, textures, techniques that you can use to depict beaches because they come in all sorts of shapes and sizes. One of the things that I often use to add texture is watercolour pencils. I've got a great video on using watercolour pencils alongside watercolour. Many of the techniques in this video can also be used for your beach paintings. You can watch this video right now.